cancel culture. Everybody's talking about cancel culture. You turn on the social media anywhere, YouTube things, mainstream media, cancel culture, cancel culture, cancel culture. And it's interesting because the thing I notice most is that, as far as I know, cancel culture came from people talking about canceling on the left of social media a few years ago. And I've heard about it since with people like contrapoints and controversies within the trans community and that sort of thing. And suddenly the media is full of cancel culture. Everybody's concerned about it. And why is that? Because J.K. Rowling has signed the letter. And Noam Chomsky has too, but if you look at the media, mainstream media, J.K. Rowling is featured everywhere. J.K. Rowling is against cancelling. And what have we seen from J.K. Rowling recently? Mostly transphobia. She's a bit upset because she's been incredibly transphobic and basically denying the identity of trans people, and people have gotten a little pissy with her in consequence, including people, uh, actors who played in the Harry Potter movies. Um, a number of people have said, look, your transphobic stuff, you know, I just want to keep my distance. And so suddenly she's worried about cancel culture. She feels like she's been canceled. And when she says this, it makes every mainstream media outlet in the bloody world. And there's something ironic about that. Welcome to Life is a Leaf. Today we're talking about cancel culture. Okay, well this is going to be fairly brief because my interest isn't really in cancel culture, except as an aspect of the culture wars. Now, I'm very interested in the culture wars, and I'm very interested in the pushes for free speech that you hear from the right. And when the right talk about free speech, mostly they're talking about the right to be politically incorrect, to be bigots, to be demagogues, to engage in hate speech, because all of that has been touted as free speech. And you've got people like Jordan Peterson and various other people raving on about free speech. You know, it's all the denial of free speech to be asked to refer to people by their genders. Uh, <laughs> I would have thought it was just politeness. You know, you know, you don't say dickhead egghead when you're a student of somebody like Professor Peterson. Uh, and he probably wouldn't like it if you did, but I doubt that he would defend your free speech if you did. And basically free speech has been one of those areas where the right have basically taken the language of human rights and utilized it to their own ends. And this, of course, also ties into my interest in intention and bad intention in particular. I think we see those arguments for free speech and it's really an argument against politeness because they're not really very interested in some other people having free speech. They're not very interested. I mean, J.K. Rowling is certainly not interested in her critics having free speech. And they have jumped on this new term, cancel culture. And now that J.K. Rowling and a few other right-wing pundits have signed this letter, all of a sudden, you know, I look at the media and it's Sky News, Sky News, Fox News, the Murdoch Press. It is all had Fox and Sky News and the Murdoch Press are all owned by Rupert Murdoch, of course, and most of the tabloids in England, and most of the newspapers in Australia, and, you know, so on. These people are worried about cancel culture? Give me a break. I 
also look at social media and see how if anybody dares talk about Palestine, ooh, you can get demonetized almost immediately on YouTube. You're liable to have problems with Google. You're liable to have problems with Facebook. All of a sudden, the algorithms sort of change, and all of a sudden, nobody sees your posts. You can go from having 10 or 15,000 people to when you make a post, two people see it. How is that possible? You know, and, and particularly where you know previous posts have been 2,000 people see it, and then suddenly something changes and two people start see it, and suddenly that channel is dead. I've had friends who've had to recreate their channels, start new channels three or four times in order to get some sort of traction. I think that's kind of disgusting, and if you want to talk about cancel culture, I think that's something big. I think the most interesting thing about cancel, or one of the more interesting things about cancel culture, is that the people who seem to be complaining most, or getting the most uh, highlight in the media, are people who have immense power, who, when they speak, the mainstream media does take it up, who have massive platforms, uh, people like J.K. Rowling. Yeah, she has no end of people who are willing to report any bloody thing she says, including her transphobic slurs and horrible things. Yeah, people will repeat it and repeat it and talk about it, and you hear nothing but J.K. Rowling for the last few weeks with her, with her transphobic stuff. And does she consider that cancelling? On the other hand, you have people like Chris Hedges who were... Uh, writing for mainstream papers, and then they became a little too left, and suddenly they were out. And Hedges can still get avenues to put out his views, because he's incredibly articulate and very well read. And, and yet, then you have people who have no access to media, or very little access to media. I don't know that you can really call being able to use your mobile phone to get on Twitter access to, to, to media. I, it's certainly better than nothing. I mean, you can always make a poster and put it up in your local library. I guess that's free speech for some, some of us. But uh, I think there is a massive difference in terms of the platforms and the attention that gets paid to your words. Uh, Jordan Peterson, oh, free speech. We hear a lot about Jordan Peterson, and he manages to make a lot of money touring around the country, uh, speaking at universities about the dangers against free speech. He certainly seems to get his opinions um, heard. Yeah, I think the danger, of course, is that you have the right-wing ethno-nationalists, neo-Nazis, and that sort of thing, who would love to be able to demand a platform, and they seem to think they are owed a platform anywhere. And, and you talk about cancelling, and, and what, in a sense, is cancelling other than a boycott? Uh, it's basically saying, I won't read your stuff. I won't look at your stuff. I won't you know, watch your movies or read your books. How much is that going to hurt J.K. Rowling? It might. It might. I mean, she is overtly transphobic enough. Like uh, Orson Scott Card, who with his, you know, using his platform for homophobia. I think when those kind of things get known, it creates a certain stink. And some people, sponsors or movie companies or whatever, may decide to step away a little bit because it's kind of toxic being associated with people who are preaching hatred. But is that wrong? Isn't that 
the way society works. If somebody is putting forth really bad ideas, uh, negative ideas, hateful ideas, don't we hope that society will reject those ideas? Isn't the forum of free thought supposed to be a place where if somebody's free thought is you know, a bit toxic and awful, that people don't listen to those people. We are free not to listen to people. The thing is, you know, J.K. Rowling or Jordan Peterson or any of these people, they have huge ability to have their thoughts heard. Because, you know, Rupert Murdoch, you know, the Murdoch Press in Tasmania and Australia, you have the Australian and some of the other Murdoch properties, Sky News and stuff, pumping out all kinds of racist, homophobic, transphobic garbage on a daily basis. And these are the major news sources. This is the mainstream media. And when this is the mainstream media, and they can put out all those kind of ideas because they have money and they own the media when people who own the media can decide that certain left-wing ideas, you know, you just need to adjust the algorithms. They've said something against Israel, um, which is an apartheid state, you know, and has been censured by the UN, what, 162 times? I don't remember how many times, how many UN resolutions have been passed about uh, Palestine and the apartheid state in Israel and the way they kill people and take their homes and bulldoze their homes and move in and, and simply just put up, you know, they, they've moved into what is supposed to be somebody else's country, bulldoze their villages, put up uh, settlements and call it theirs. And now they're talking about annexing it because Trump is good buddies, you know, and people aren't supposed to criticize that because, well, they're Jewish, that's anti-Semitic, but Jewish people criticize that, and it's not about the fact that they're Jewish, it's about the fact that they're killing people, it's a fact about the fact that Gaza is an open-air prison, it's about the fact that they've had a blockade around that country for ages. You, know, uh, you start talking about Yemen or you start going against the narratives, the anti-Russian narratives or the anti-Chinese narratives or the anti-Iranian narratives or the anti-Venezuelan narratives or the anti-whoever it is the United States wants to you know, do over next. And all of a sudden, you're on tr in trouble on social media. And why aren't they worried about that if they're worried about free speech. It's because they're not worried about free speech. They're worried about J.K. Rowling's right to say whatever the hell she wants and get worldwide coverage. And she wants that right without any kind of criticism of her. And this is actually part of the culture wars. This is efforts by the right, by racists, by uh, white ethnostate people, by all of these sort of people, to basically control the narrative entirely and to put down you know, anybody who might be engaged in identity politics, meaning they've been identified by structures of power and then oppressed on the basis of that identity. And gay people didn't start by identifying as gay. Gay people started by being identified as gay and oppressed and imprisoned and beaten and killed because they were gay. Now, that identity was imposed from above and... Uh, that's the issue. I mean, identity politics doesn't come out of nowhere. 
That's a slightly different subject. I'm just all over the place at the moment. I just wanted to do a really quick something about this and point out the fact that this cancel culture thing is now on all the mainstream media. And why is that? Because you've got famous people with money and big platforms who have been, many of whom have been cancelled or given heavy criticism because of racism, homophobia, transphobia, and so on. Really? And, and are we supposed to worry about that? Yeah. Viva la revolution. These people need to go down, actually. There needs to be some major change. And as long as these people have the power they have, there's never going to be anything like a level playing field, which they like to pretend there is. And without that, this whole notion of you know, free speech and cancel culture, I mean, if poor people or activists or environmentalists or anybody else says the wrong thing, they get hit by slap suits. Yeah. There are all kinds of things. I mean, Oprah Winfrey got hit with a lawsuit for criticizing beef. What about all of that? Nobody worried about cancel culture with that. And Oprah Winfrey has millions of dollars. She's famous. What do you think happens when you have a small environmental group? What do you think happens when you're black and you're criticizing you know, some racist? Uh, it's, it's not the same. It's not equal. Uh, there's no equality here. And without that, without some measure of justice, and by justice, I mean some measure of equity, where people have some chance of accessing media and having some kind of voice. I mean, I can have a little bit of a voice, in part because, although I'm on a pension, I'm on a fixed income, I don't have a whole lot of money, I have enough money to have you know, a phone, I have enough money to have a yard that I can stand in the dark uh, and talk in. And not everybody has that. Yeah. I eat. I haven't had to worry about food, although we do produce some of our own food, and we need to. But there's a lot of people who don't have that. And what about their right to speech? And what about their right to have their views represented? And what about the people like Max Blumenthal or Abby Martin or you know, uh, people who are reputable investigative reporters who are really putting out good information and yet have an absolute uphill battle to put out anything? Putting out anything against the American imperialist machine which wants to invade place after place after place, yeah, and in, engages in sanctions that end up with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people dead in order to cripple their economy, in order to make them surrender and put in place some government the Yankees like. Well, you know, if you talk about that, you know, you're liable not to do very well on social media. Shame about that. If you're J.K. Rowling, you can be as transphobic as you like, and all you have to do is go, cancel culture. I've, I've been offended. And it's all over the world. Anyway, just a brief thought. Have a good night. Happy Pride. <laughs>